good morning to you all i welcome all the participants in the webinar on implications of covid-19 lockdown on trade and commerce which is jointly organized by mizoram university and sikkim university uh, we are now in our inaugural session uh, before i start with a small request to all the participants uh, we have muted all the participants as of now uh, after this you can unmute if anyone is going to speak and if anyone is having any query please post it in question and answer session q and a session and those questions will be posted to the speakers after his presentation is over so i uh, i come back to my program uh, in our inaugural sessions i am feeling proud to introduce we are having three renowned persons in our panel uh, professor p subara he is honorable vice chancellor of millennium university republic of malawi professor avinash khare sir honorable vice chancellor of sikkim university and professor k r s sambasiva rao honorable vice chancellor of mizoram university uh, i also introduce my friend my colleague my co host of the program dr a n shankar from sikkim university department of commerce sikkim university Uh, i will not take much time in introduction uh, because the persons of eminence are there in the panel and almost everyone knows all of these people very well uh, everyone knows very well about professor subarao uh, we have read all of us must have read the books written by him he has written many books he is having an experience of more than 40 years of teaching not only in india but abroad also as of now he is vice chancellor of millennium university in republic of malawi uh, we are having professor avinash khare sir honorable vice chancellor of sikkim university he is the field of his specialization is plasma physics and nuclear energy he has published more than 160 papers uh, i would like to request him to give uh, to address the gathering sir professor khare sir <coughs> Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very clear. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. Professor Subarao, Vice Chancellor of Millennium University, Malawi. Professor K R S K R S uh, Sambashivarao, Vice Chancellor, Mizoram University, Angel, and my colleague, esteemed chairperson of respective sessions, dean of schools, heads of the department, and dear participants. when dr shankar talked to me about this uh, participating in the webinar of this uh, of this topic i was extremely happy because it's very topical and it's very timely i'm very happy to participate in the inaugural function of the of the of the webinar on implication of covid-19 lockdown on trade and commerce ladies and gentlemen the pandemic led lockdown by the governments across the globe called havoc in every aspect of human life to begin with academic institutions are forced to shift to cyber space for routine functioning due to physical distancing measures due to physical distancing measures internet platforms like google classroom microsoft teams zoom hangouts webex whatsapp etc have gained twice their normal in terms of users ranging between 3 to 4 millions across the service providers especially zoom 4 million and google 3 million that's a big number with increase in web traffic the supply chain of e-commerce has revamped to meet the spur in demand amidst the business transformation in commensuration with lockdown a painstaking exodus of migrant labor laborers was challenge to future uh, operations of msmes the government of india had responded to economic catastrophe by launching atmanirbhar scheme with an allocation of rupees 7 rupees 20.97 lakh crores that's a huge sum unprecedented loss is caused to micro small 
and medium enterprises and nbfcs for which 14.69 crores have been disbursed in the form of soft loan ladies and gentlemen capital markets rank, banking tourism functional areas of business and its management have been affected tremendously demanding a new normal for survival and growth the period witnessed unprecedented manifestation of altruism by the ceos to support various communities and we have already seen examples of that many many examples where people have come forward to help the people who were in need who were destitute by exploring existing production capacity for manufacturing and for the equipment for uh, for treating and ailing so these measures were used entrepreneurial interventions to manufacture covid-19 testing kits hand sanitizers masks and the ppe kits have received due attention from the community product promotion in case of detol has ignored the rules of cutthroat competition during shortage of generic products because earlier there was a big competition between detol and other manufacturers in the field there was a cutthroat competition that has all gone because of this pandemic the demands of biophysical environment for business are reiterated by the way of clarity of sky suddenly the pollution has decreased as you can see in delhi it has decreased tremendously movement of fauna over the otherwise busy sites with polluted sky in this backdrop it is important for academicians and researchers to brainstorm and identify area of potential research as one as one can see this this uh, webinar on this topic is very very topical it is handling and it is going to handle schemes it is going to this there will be discussions in this seminar about schemes and about uh, the you know ways to handle this pandemic and how the the the, the lockdown has affected trade and commerce so i wish all the participants a very good uh, very productive discussions and very productive exchange of ideas i wish them all the best thank you sir thank you sir for a very good speech uh, to start with uh, thanks a lot for joining us thanks a lot for giving your wishes to us thank you sir uh, and i would like to request uh, professor p subarao sir uh, to deliver his keynote address he needs no introduction he is a very well known personality in the field of commerce management and human resource management he has written about 25 books more than 100 papers he is having uh, he is a recipient of highest civilian award from the government of papua new guinea so i request him to please join us uh, before that one more thing he was he was about to travel today during this period only but uh, i would like to say a big thanks to him that he uh, changed his travel plan to join this session thank you sir please welcome subara sir namaste subara sir namaste namaste <laughs> okay on time sir uh -huh. are you are you able to listen to me good yes 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 yes, yes. Oh, okay i start thank you very much vice chancellor sikkim university vice chancellor mizoram university organizers of webinar participants panelists everyone good morning everyone in the past two we have the recessions we have the impact of this recession all those on the trade commerce and so on and so forth but this current one is coupled with information technology as well as globalization is causing larger damage unlike the past pandemics those the past ones are limited to a particular country or a particular region but now when we globalized the globalization now it is multifarious it's not linked just to trade and commerce it's linked to everything in the nation society country economy and so on and so forth if we go back 
during 90s and 60, 1960s and 70s, we used to mainly speak about the self-dependency. At the time, we used to depend on agriculture sector and mostly 80% of the population used to depend on agriculture. So the rate of unemployment, those things, we didn't speak much because we had the problem of the food itself. But thanks to the scientists, the green revolution, white revolution, blue revolution, so on and so forth, they solved the problems. And then we shifted to self-reliance in 1980s. When we thought of self-reliance, we developed the small micro industry as well as the domestic industries. Suddenly, the invention of the globalization, it is not the first time, it is the second or the third globalization. Coupled with the self-interest of the advanced nations, they pushed the globalization and we were forced to welcome it. And after welcoming it, we have become one of the major beneficiaries of the globalization. But here, we have become one of the major beneficiaries, not the major, the, the major beneficiary. So that is the problem for India. And again, when you see the economy and the sectors, the first one is primary, second one is industry, third one is service, the fourth one is knowledge. We shifted or jumped rather from primary to the service sector and then to the knowledge sector. Because of the level of education in India, rather than concentrating on the manufacturing, we, we, we jumped to the, the third and the fourth levels. The consequences of this is employment problem. If we take the China, they concentrate on the manufacturing sector. It, it is even today the hub of the manufacturing of the entire globe. But the pandemic is making a little bit shaking. But once the COVID problem is solved, we don't know what will happen. But the problem for our country is non-concentration on manufacturing sector. And here, the current problem is not only just economic, even it includes the health. That means we have the health recession also, not only the economic recession. Mostly the, the business and management, uh, teachers and the students, we speak of the economic recession, impact of the economic recession on trade, commerce, and so on and so forth. But now we are thinking of beyond our trade and commerce and beyond the economic recession. This recession is not just economic recession, it is the global recession relating to the health sector also. So here, as I told you, we are strong in service sector, but we are weak in manufacturing sector. Unless we develop our manufacturing sector also, we cannot be self-reliant. If you see the global trade, India is not the top, one among the top countries in export or even in imports, or even in the positive balance of payments. It was US, the top exporter, top importer, as well as the top one in the uh, positive balance of payments. But that share was taken away by China. After 2012, China is the largest exporter in the globe, largest importer in the globe, and as well as largest country with the positive balance of payments. That's why it is able to dictate the terms throughout the globe. Wherever you go, you see the Chinese products. Wherever you go, you see the Chinese. And where the people, the local people cannot go even in Africa, they cannot go to the places Chinese go. Where the local people cannot do the trading, these people do. That means the special character of working in any environment under any circumstances, that means the people of China, they do it, so therefore, they grabbed the economy of the total, almost total world. It pushed back the US and all other countries. And we have been suffering from the negative balance of payments. And our export of human resources is a blessing in disguise. It is compensating the negative balance in the balance of trade, but ultimately the balance of payments position, even though it is, it is negative. So China, it's because of exporting the goods, not the services. They are able to export the goods because they are very strong in manufacturing sector, the hardworking nature of the people. 
and working under any circumstances. So here, the COVID is making everyone in the country, including the Prime Minister, to think of self-reliance. That is what we used to discuss and what we used to teach and learn during the 1980s. The teachers used to teach about the self-reliance, how to be reliant, what to do, uh, development of the micro, small industry, which is suitable to the India and so on and so forth. But the globalization killed almost all the micro, small industry, but still we are striving to recoup them. But anyhow, the COVID has, provide, has, has made a, another challenge. That another challenge is rethinking of globalization. Is the globalization is viable for everyone or should we think of self-reliance? That means these are the two schools of thought. One school of thought is self-reliance and another school of thought is the globalization. If we have the mix, like in some sectors, some areas, globalization and some areas, self-reliance, and where we can have the shock absorbers as well as the risk mitigation so that in future, when we have such a type of the problem like the COVID-19 current problem, so we can have the shock absorber for the entire Indian economy. And you see the Chinese, the current one, the, that means the, the totality of the, influencing the totality of the entire world. Now the entire world is also rethinking of the self-reliance rather than going global, rather than going completely the global, globalization. So here, the human resource of ours, though it is exportable to many countries, though it is compensating to a larger extent the negative balance in the balance of payments, it is sometimes in a problem. That problem is the problem like in the case of the pandemic. So if we develop our own manufacturing sector, then we need not depend on imports. We need not face the problems of the negative balances in the trade or the balance of payments. And at the same time, <coughs> our dependency on other countries would also reduce. So therefore, what I suggest to the participants of the seminar, to think what type of the strategies, not only the service sector and the knowledge sector, but also the manufacturing sector in India. There, what is the role of the academic institutions? Are we really committed to develop the quality education? Or if we see the scenario, or are we liberal in awarding the degrees compared to the 1970s and 80s scenarios? And what is our role in developing competent as well as highly skilled human resources? So think, for, think from the perspective also, and so that the manufacturing sector in India, that means where our people can be more fit to the manufacturing, because we are losing a lot of foreign currency in importing, rather than just exporting the, just only in the IT. That is not the significant one in this process. So as the academic institutions think about what kind of human resources we have to develop, that will, that will fit the strategy of the self-reliance and to make the trade and commerce stabilize more or less in the same scenario, even under such situations of the COVID or any type of the economic recessions like 2007, 2008, and so on and so forth. So those countries which are strong in manufacturing sector, they provide employment to the huge population. Don't forget it. IT cannot provide the employment to the huge. Similarly, services sector also, it provides to some extent, but there is no backup in the sense whenever there is the recession, like current or even economic recession, services sector is the first one to be, to, to be affected. But it is not the manufacturing, it is not the agriculture sector the initially because all of us, we need the basic, that is the food. So therefore, the agrarian economy never be affected. And the second one is the manufacturing sector, which has the shock absorbers from the economic recession or any kind of the recession. The service sector as well as the knowledge sector, they are the first ones to be affected by the recessions. So my suggestion to the participants is to think about the future, not just the COVID, any kind of the recessions that would cause in the future and 
how we should develop the human resources. These human resources, which would fit the manufacturing sector of the country, not only the manufacturing sector in a balanced way, economy, primary uh, manufacturing, service, and the knowledge. There should be the balance of the human resources in all these sectors. Therefore, we need not depend on the foreign economies, and we need not we we won't have this type of the problem of importing the diseases. When we stop importing the people, importing the goods and services from other countries, invariably we can also import this type of the diseases also from other country. You see now the China is the largest exporter, not only goods, services, but also the diseases throughout the world. So we, to have such, to, to have the, to, to have the risk aversion for are the, from such type of the things, we should have the balanced approach of developing the human resources as well as developing the all these four kinds of the four sectors of the economy in a due process. So with this, I thank the participants. I thank the organizers. I thank the vice chancellors of the both the universities, and especially I thank Professor Jyoti Kumar, who has given the opportunity to me to deliver the keynote address in this webinar. Thank you once and once again. Thank you. Excellent. One excellent, sir. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, it was really very, very interesting. You have touched upon almost all sector of the economy. Everything you have touched upon. Uh, you talked about uh, Atma Nirbhar Bharat. What is the trending words now? Uh, in a way, we are going for Atma Nirbhar. The way uh, from uh, 18th of March, all universities are closed down. But yeah. we started teaching online. Yeah. So this pandemic has taught us a lot of things. Uh, we used to conduct seminars with some 20, 30, 35 participants only. But I would like to inform all the participants that we got more than 890 registrations for the seminar. Uh, this is uh, actually the, we started organizing such programs under Mizoram University from 1st of May. 50 days back we started and we have already organized 57 programs. This is 58th program. So almost every day we are doing it. In a way we are going towards Satan Nirbhar, at least in teaching. Uh, sir also talked about uh, balancing of HR in all sectors of economy. That is really, really very, very important. Uh, Sometimes I feel agriculture is very much ignored in our economy. Uh, we should focus on agriculture because that is the basic need. So that is rightly said by Professor Subar Rao that uh, we have to think about balance of HR in all sectors of economy, not only IT sector, which is too much uh, focus is there on IT industry. He talked about role of educational institutions. He talked or focused on manufacturing sector. You mentioned that we should strengthen the manufacturing sector in our country so that our reliance on imports will reduce and we may start exporting. Thank you, sir, for your inputs, for giving, the, for putting the ball rolling. We will keep on discussing on the topics you have given to us, the idea you have given to us for the whole of this day today. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Thanks a lot, sir. Okay, thank you, uh, once again. Thank you, one and all. Yeah. Yes. Bye. Uh, sir, uh, uh, now I would like to request uh, Professor K.R.S. Samasiva Rao, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Mizoram University, to make an address. But before that, uh, I would like to say a big thanks to him. That, uh, as I told, this is 58th program under webinar in last 50 days, and whole credit goes to our Vice Chancellor, Professor Rao. He keeps on focusing us. He keeps on telling us that you have to do this or that for academic excellence only. The day our university was uh, under lockdown, he keeps on sending us messages to be prepared for online teaching, for continuous remain in touch with the students. So we are doing those things under his leadership. Uh, he is well known for his uh, contribution in the field of academics. He is having more than 240 publications. He has authored 25 books in different capacities. His total citations on Scopus is more than 4,000. His H index is 36. So uh, I would like to request him to give an address to the participants of the seminar, sir. Sir. Thank you, Professor Bartendru. 
uh, respected uh, honorable vice chancellor of sikkim university professor avinash ji uh, namaskar um, uh, professor subarog garu and uh, the other speakers uh, uh, from uh, prasain ji from um, manipur university and shrutiya from delhi university uh, and other speakers and uh, surya prakash ji and uh, uh, many other uh, participants from uh, uh, sikkim university the uh, uh, shankar and uh, uh, other faculty members and participants it is a great uh, occasion for me i am supposed to come to sikkim university in the month of april please you are most welcome sir uh, actually uh, i was invited by commerce department for a seminar yes uh, in the last minute it was cancelled sir actually otherwise <laughs> on april 8th 9th 10th uh, i fixed my journey to uh, sikkim university i, I missed that uh, because uh, you have Professor Rao, you know you have a standing invitation from me. You come whenever you are free. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I want to see you in your university, but somehow yes. I missed it, sir. Actually, next time, please plan. Yes, sir, 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 sir. Certainly, I will come, sir. Actually, I am not a person to be uh, very uh, familiar with this particular topic of the seminar, but my experiences uh, in artist and also in various. Uh, uh, Every day-to-day -day life of this during this pandemic situation, I just wanted to mention some of you and uh, some of the things how it is going to be uh, taken up and how it has to be given uh, priority for solving certain issues uh, in trade and commerce of the country. As uh, rightly pointed out by our keynote speaker in various issues he mentioned about the uh, the present. Uh, scenario and also what are the things to be uh, and how we need to have a self reliance in india one particular example always we say that uh, during this pandemic situation when everything is under lockdown for almost 3 3 months and india when lockdown started there was no even uh, uh, masks available sufficient masks available in the country there are no pp equipment are available there are no ventilators there are no sanitizers and uh, every state in the country is suffering such a way and uh, due to the uh, hardship of our honorable prime minister and uh, all collective approach now india has been the best example for self reliance india has made all the mass uh, even mizoram the small state of a uh, country we don't have a sufficient masks we don't have sanitizers we don't have any pp equipment now mizoram has been uh, self sufficient to have its own masks now even our mizoram university under the leadership of rama ramaswami we have established a bivok program and all the students of bivok program they are now uh, manufacturing masks uh, two layered masks three layered masks uh, in a sufficient number under the uh, leadership of uh, Uh, Rama Rama Swami, a whole Mizoram now they are supplying, and already they have supplied more than fifteen thousand, twenty thousand masks in the last one week to two weeks. And our DSD incubator, uh, Dr. Under Madina, both both uh, Rama and Madina belongs to Commerce Department of our Mizoram University. They have developed their own masks and their own PPE kits, and uh, they are supplying to uh, uh, whole Mizoram and several uh, household. Uh, Uh, women in mizoram they are started doing masks and pp equipment now we don't need to get any kind of masks pp equipment from outside now mizoram is a self sufficient uh, state for all this india has now proved itself that it is a self reliant country and all those things are now available pp equipment are available and drdo has started manufacturing fully covered fully protected pp equipment sanitizers and ventilators everything india is now able to do i have been listening to our honorable keynote speaker india is so uh, lagging behind in the manufacture sector but i had a feeling that uh, manufacturing sector is uh, uh, suffered being suffered in the countries like china now you understand and uh, even though they are leaders of the manufacturing sector china has so uh, recovered from the pandemic situation very early 
and it has been uh, uh, under observation by many countries but china actually the drop in the production of the chinese technology chinese country is so much more than 40% of the production technology has been dropped now though it is recovered very well china was in a very severe condition now because all the orders were cancelled and all the product products which are been produced in china are now not been exported to any country the meeting aipindindi the reception of the matter extension ki and it is also that all the malli vallu chair kalaji antaru because of various reasons they are now stopping hmm. the products which are coming from the china now china the manufacturing leaders of the world now now going down in where even even though the fall in the uh, economics of the country if you just see the uh, expected the large economics actually india's china economic production or economic stage has uh, has fallen little bit in the last three months it is very limited it is only 1.5 percent or something but uh, it is going to be much higher in the chinese uh, production because uh, they have 30% of the orders are cancelled and uh, it is one of the important uh, point i just wanted to say that the recovery of the economic condition of those countries where there are a lot of manufacturing technology is going on it is uh, depends on the self reliance of the various countries now uh, this pandemic situation as rightly pointed out by our keynote speaker has taught so many lessons for us particularly in the education sector earlier we never had any opportunity of teaching or listening in the online i never know about uh, video conferencing and i never spoke about uh, uh, zoom or any other thing but in the last uh, two months we had uh, 100 speakers from foreign countries uh, speaking to our students 100 speakers uh, foreign uh, countries they are just teaching us two hours two hours every day and uh, so total scenario has been changed in the universities and in the normal circumstances if we are organizing a conference we cannot get 40 people or 30 people in the universities particularly in northeast region we don't get but now we are some days we are getting 1800 1900 2000 speakers and every day we are getting number of uh, participants from various parts of the country even foreign countries malaysia and other people are coming and various online programs and we are trying to uh, the, we are almost you no know, whole syllabus has been completed in online instruction and uh, we are uh, already right going for examinations also online from the next month onwards and uh, when uh, we started initiated the program with the school of engineering for next uh, next month online examination similarly one by one school after the other we are going for online examination you have to be remember that uh, one of the important point that all universities in europe all universities in australia all universities in america they cancelled physical classes up to 2001 june 2021 june there are no possibilities for conducting classes in any universities in the world in the next uh, one year and uh, don't think that this pandemic situation is going to be going away very easily and uh, this is one of the important situation that the country, whole country whole world has to change the scenario they have to shift into online programs and this is the online is the only way now we have to come up in this one and uh, mizoram university is uh, going round all this uh, next semester also we are planning for online classes in the first semester and other semesters also in the next six months and this is uh, this is the scenario that uh, covid has uh, taught us how to come up from this situation how to go up in this situation and uh, very importantly you have to understand that the country has been exports have been uh, the uh, exports india exports and imports has only just below 2% because india's exports is only 2 uh, 1.7% imports is only as rightly pointed out by our uh, keynote speaker and uh, imports is only 2% but uh, the exports of china exports of america are much higher than any other country in the world uh, more than 10% their exports and imports they are the people suffering now india is not getting suffered india's economy is not going down we are much higher and what is that we are facing is the migrant labor because india has got highest number of migrant labor and they are shifting from different places to different places and they are becoming loss of employment and livelihood is going to be affected and this is one of the point actually government of india is thinking very much that they need to be provided with the self employment at the particular place where they are living 
and now this is a situation that all the universities should also come up how to make the people at the places of where they are staying how to make them self employed and how to make them that, that uh, technical skills which are actually useful for them to come up in their life this is what actually and the travel sector particularly the northeast region is highly affected because before the pandemic situation sikkim sikkim is one of the state where may maximum number of tourists used to come there and uh, all other northeast states actually used to have the number of uh, uh, visitors how this is one of the uh, travel sector related to travel sector and so many hotels so many uh, tourist uh, uh, dependent people all been affected and many of the exports from india that is uh, actually that even though it is very uh, small amount that is 2% of the world uh, share like uh, the garments the textiles and other things actually the uh, agriculture products actually they lost uh, so much of export from the country like 61 to 90% of the total exports were closed so this is what actually the trade has been stopped and the business has been stopped in india but india has been uh, already in the under the progress of self reliance and this is one of the very important things you are, need to understand though we have a, a shortfall of economy though we have certain situations that india has been suffering but india is self reliant already it is started in that process and it is now reaching that particular situation that india has become very important even good in manufacturing technology even there are many places the test for actually the uh, covid has been started and vaccine trials also, also has been started ayurvedic medicines also has been started they are under clinical trials and india is going to be self reliant no doubt about that but the only thing is people the other countries people they don't think that india is going to be affected because of huge population of 150 crores of population they cannot maintain but still india you, you just see the statistics of the 86 lakhs people who got the covid affected in the world the death rate in america is not comparable to india indian death rate is only 2.5% of the total covid population and many people are getting recovered so india is not going down it is going to be strong stronger stronger in future and it is going to be because indian manpower is highly technical manpower and it is under the leadership of our honorable prime minister definitely it will go to that particular situation and i am um, the take home message my feeling is that india is going to be controlling very effectively the pandemic situation and it will definitely recover and it will be very strong in economy and i strongly hope that india will be definitely one of the leaders in the business economy in the coming days thank you very much bartendru for giving me this opportunity and all the speakers uh, uh, to share my feelings uh, uh, a little extent what I, it's a common man's uh, uh, experience thank you namaskar thank you sir thank you thanks a lot for giving very thoughtful speech the mantra for today seems to be self reliance we have to rely on ourselves we have to start working to be standing on our own feet that is the mantra from uh, professor krs samasiva rao sir our vice chancellor uh, thank you sir for uh, highlighting contribution of uh, my department in uh, uh, in working for this covid situation sir has quoted uh, uh, dr rama ram swami who is running who is coordinator for vivo course and uh, the students of vivo are now preparing uh, face masks and other things by this way they are contributing and uh, dr rama ram swami will be having a paper in the second session today and he also quoted name of uh, dr lalding liana he is uh, dst incubator in charge for that incubation center and uh, that incubation center is also doing in to help the state fight with covid thank you sir for highlighting these two from our department uh, he highlighted about the the change the new change or the new normal in the field of education how the things are moving from past we were not even thinking that it is possible to interact with 800 people conducting a seminar 800 people and everyone in this room only i am sitting with one person everyone is sitting alone but we are 800 nearly 800 people listening to each other that is again uh, an outcome of covid only so we are learning a lot we are changing a lot along with this and this will keep on going uh, sir is very very positive about the indian economy uh, and he has highlighted that uh, as compared to america considered to be the best in uh, medical science italy considered to be second in the medical science if we see our death rates india is much better reason is uh, our immunity system is better we are already we are self reliance so we have to extend it further 
uh, these all things uh, vice chancellor has quoted thank you sir a lot for giving us time for encouraging us and be here thank you sir thank you sir uh, before uh, requesting dr shankar for vote of thanks i would like to give a brief idea about the uh, program we are having uh, we are having seven technical sessions all together uh, first four technical sessions technical session 1 will be chaired by professor vk shotriya from delhi university technical session 2 will be chaired by professor gp prasen from manipur university technical session 3 will be chaired by professor b ramesh from goa university and technical session 4 is not for paper presentation there are two persons two resource persons in this session very important session uh, because we requested one person from industry to represent industry side he is uh, sri d rama rama krishna he is uh, chairman of cii confederation of indian Indust industries in andhra pradesh and one person from academics professor shivaram prasad he is dean faculty of commerce in nagarjuna university these four technical sessions will be held here after on this platform and then we are having a second track which is going to be held by my friend dr shankar in sikkim university a parallel track will be there and there will be three technical sessions 5 6 7 and 8 uh, papers are there in each of the session so more than 20 papers in their session and nearly 10 50 papers in our session will be there so this is the program we have identified uh, our inaugural session is common for both the tracks and then after finishing all these uh, dr shankar will rejoin with all his participants again for our uh valedictory session so this is the scheme we are having for today's program uh now i would like to request uh, dr shankar to offer vote of thanks dr shankar dr yan shankar so good morning uh, uh, dr bhartend sir uh thank you very much for uh, handing over me the charge uh, first and foremost i would like to thank the uh, busy uh, schedule uh, despite of busy schedule uh, our vice chancellor honorable vice chancellor professor uh, vinash khare who motivated me by accepting the proposal of holding the seminar overnight at around 257 am i received his email confirming that i can go ahead with the program and uh, my uh, i also uh, thank honorable uh, vice chancellor of uh, malavi university uh, sir millennium university malavi professor b uh, yeah, professor uh, professor p subbarao and then i also thank professor uh, samasibarao the honorable vice chancellor sir of the mizoram university so as they have consented and then they have also uh, inspired us to hold the event i thank uh, beyond that i uh, i thank our uh, chair persons distinguished chair persons from various uh, sessions uh, ranging from uh, professor uh, v k shotriya sir professor g p prasain sir uh, professor k r uh, uh, professor ramakrishna sir uh, sorry mr ramakrishna and professor b ramesh sir also uh, we have other uh, three uh, chair persons there uh, professor jyoti kumar sir assistant professor dr krishna murari sir Professor uh, S S Mahapatra sir, the head of the department of the uh, of our uh, commerce department uh, in Sikkim University. I also uh, beyond that I thank all the technical coordinators, uh, including my uh, colleagues Mr. Vimuth Pandian, and uh, who have taken initiative to uh, coordinate all the panel sessions to hold at least uh, 30 presentations within an hour. So they are, they have all the, they have contributed a lot. towards my uh, towards our venture to hold the webinar i thank all the finally i thank all the participants and the paper presenters who have taken keen interest to make it a grand success thank you very much sir thank you one and all uh, thank you dr shankar uh, now we are towards the end of our inaugural session in uh, next 5 minute we will start first technical session uh, it's uh, a big uh, what to say um, 
uh, I'm feeling honored to host three vice chancellors in a program. Thank you, sir, for joining the program. Thanks a lot, sir. In next five minutes, we will be joining technical session one in uh, on this platform itself and technical session five, six and seven on they have already received the links. So thank you all. And we'll meet in next five minutes again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you, Bhupendra sir. Excellent. Inauguration session is very, very excellent, sir. <laughs> How to unmute? That one is not working. This one not unmute. Okay, they they can do only. Uh, so. Uh, uh, better we start our first technical session with uh, okay. Professor K.K. Shodriya, sir. Uh, sir, please uh, turn on your video and audio. One person has sent on email. So email is possible to download here. Professor Singh, sir. Ah, in the in, sir. Thank you, better. Okay, okay.
professor shotriya sir yes sir i am here okay okay sir for your video uh, yes 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 yeah. okay thank you sir for joining uh shotriya sir Uh, if everybody is ready yes why not <laughs> sir uh, good morning uh, good afternoon to all the participants um professor vk shotia needs no introduction actually we know him uh, we always find him in a smiley face always ready to help whether it is academic or non academic or personal use whatever any time he is ready to help with positive gesture always thank you sir for uh, offering all the suggestions for all other purposes previously what you have done and i hope our uh, association will continue for very long uh, a very small thing i would like to tell about him uh, he started his career from bhutan a college in bhutan in 1993 and continued till 2002 in 2002 he joined uh, nehu northeastern hill university and he continued till uh, 2015 and in 2015 he has joined delhi university and he is continuing there as professor uh, he is uh, as i told already he is uh, very humble very supportive and his memory i should say is very strong i i remember one thing about him i met him in one commerce association seminar in uh, indore uh, dr kabra my friend introduced me to him first time i was assistant professor that time and he was uh, a senior teacher already in nehu after that after one year gap in, in next commerce uh, association uh, meeting in banaras after a gap of one year we met again and he was the person professor shotriya was the person who recognized me he called me with name i was a assistant professor that time a very new person very young i'm talking about some 15 years back he identified me by face he called me by my name and he interacted with me i was actually much surprised that uh, a person of his gesture is able to recognize me thank you sir uh, for all uh, now i would like to request him to give a keynote address uh, meanwhile all the participants if they want to post any question please put it in question and answer q and a section after his address i will be posting this questions to him So, sir, uh, the time is yours now. Oh, great! Uh, good afternoon, uh, Bhartendu ji, uh, and uh, all other people who are attending this session. Thanks a lot for kind words. I don't know uh, to what extent I deserve them, but uh, on my part, I'm really humbled by uh, listening to his kind words about me. uh you know only people will with great heart would recognize others and that is how i think bhartendu ji uh, remembers me so thank you very much for uh, these kind words when in the last uh, meeting one of our uh, board meetings when he was talking about this conference he was saying that i would uh, like if you people can also join and uh, you know uh, participate uh, after that when we were conversing i said yeah i'll be very happy to be part of uh, this uh, great uh, uh, organization this great uh, initiative by mizoram university in collaboration with the sikkim university because uh, you know when an invitation of this kind comes from your whole home you have no option but to accept it and i consider the whole of northeast as my home because uh, having spent uh, around one uh, you know half of my career till now in this area half of my not my career half of my life rather in these areas in fact i'm uh, really really happy and uh, i owe it to uh, my
Uh, hello, uh, I think there is some uh, technical problem in the link. He is trying to link. I just wait for some time and he will be able to rejoin us. They call him. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't know why it got disconnected. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I think so. Uh, let me continue. So, I was what I was telling that uh, uh, when he asked that, what am I going to talk about? That time uh, I told him that uh, when I, I thought it over. And uh, then I thought maybe let me uh, put my views, my personal thinking on some of the aspects of how we should be responding in the times to follow, uh, especially post COVID era. And uh, uh, that is how I gave this topic called uh, organizations and strategies post COVID-19 era management. And uh, with this uh, uh, broader, uh, Promise in mind, I would like to uh, discuss my thinking with all of you and uh, suggest some measures for organizations, states, and the government which can help uh, having a sustainable uh, progress in the times to follow. The reason is because. Till now, what we have seen, we have uh, we are witnessing some of the worst times. From my birth till now, I have not seen the time that is prevalent today. And for that matter, even the people who were there in your inaugural session or all the participants to whatever age group you belong to, I don't think that you have seen such a time or you have witnessed such a, a, a difficult time that we have seen in last three odd months. And this I consider maybe is uh, some of the, uh, some of it is the result of our individual karmas together or the way we have dealt with uh, the people, the resources, natural resources, or conditions. And maybe I think this is something that uh, we have got a challenge to respond to. So if you look at COVID era, why it has happened, and uh, you have seen uh, a huge number of people going back to their villages from the urban centers from from uh, uh, from the uh, you know the big uh, cities they are migrating to their roots their villages they came in search of better pastures they established themselves or not if not established at least they uprooted from they uprooted themselves from the villages and moved to the to the uh, um, urban centers to the mahanagars of uh, this great country and suddenly when they saw this happening they remembered their home their villages and they started going back their plight and what has gone into their cognition through the experiences of this calamity. I don't think I can ever gauge it or I can ever be able to imagine it. Because as we all say, only the wearer knows where the shoe pinches. 
and so many of them have lost their lives as well. Now try to find out why such things are happening or why are we, a, you know, why are our lives so much affected by such natural calamities, if you call it. Of course, there is a school which is emerging, which is talking about uh, uh, this uh, um, corona, uh, coronavirus being uh, uh, man-made. So I'm not going to go into that debate. But I find the major reason of uh, its outbreak, especially not exactly the virus per se, but its effect on the lives of people is because we have left everything to the market forces. We left control to market forces. And we thought that if we leave it to market forces, markets, let markets determine how things are going to shape in future, how business organizations are going to be, what is sustainable, what is not sustainable. Uh, 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 let educational institutions uh, uh, you know, respond to them accordingly. And that is, I think, the, the uh, a flaw in our policy, ha uh, which has been. And I will try to you know, uh, tell about it that how uh, it has happened and how can we improve the conditions in the times to follow if we really care about human life, if uh, in our concern it is that uh, we need people uh, who uh, need to be focused in the policies. So the whole domain of industry, whole domain of business organizations is responding to or is succumbing to enjoy better power. And it is all about power structure. And that power structure which has moved from muscle to money the more you earn, the more you have, uh, the, the more you acquire, the better you become. And, and which is basically responding to the call that organizations and individuals are controlling resources, where there is a lot of control by individuals, by corporate houses, or for that matter, uh, 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 by the government, controlling all resources. And that's, that resource control, which uh, uh, should uh, ideally be with people, and we talk about democratic systems where we say that the governments are, are uh, elected by the people. So indirectly, it is the people who are controlling the resources. But that is not the fact. And that is where I think somewhere we have gone wrong. And. Uh, these agencies, which are which we call it as the state apparatus, the state apparatus of the government, where you have two kinds of agencies. One, where government controls things, where government uh, tries to put uh, efforts to govern the nation, govern the state, govern the lives of people, or uh, uh, you know try to reach to the the, the advantage of people try to provide them education, try to look at their health system, try to provide them the basic infrastructures, try to fulfill their basic needs. Okay, uh, uh, whether it is related to sanitation, it is related to transportation, or all kind of uh, ancillary activities. So these are, these are internal government agencies where these agencies were involved. On the other, government said, yeah, I think there is a need, because we cannot keep on on fulfilling the demands of people, let there be business organizations which take care of a, a, a production function and they produce for the needs of people in the country. So, so uh, business organizations came into being. And business organizations, when business organizations came, those business organizations were more concentrating on their kind of uh, 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 sustainability. And their kind, what, what do I mean by saying their kind of sustainability? Their kind of sustainability is focusing on profit, 
focusing on return, focusing on better revenue, more revenue. Okay, and that is how these private organizations focus on. And especially the, when we look at government organizations, government organizations looked at uh, the, 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 the welfare of people or to provide the basic amenities and to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the business organizations do not exploit the customer. And in that domain, business organizations role became very, very important. So ideally, if you look at any country system, we, we, we say there is a socialist thinking, there is a capitalist thinking. And the capitalist thinking, which more talks about concentration of, uh, of resources in the, in, the, in the hands of, uh, of uh, what you call, you know, uh, in the hands of uh, uh, corporates, in the hands of uh, wealthy people, or uh, uh, in the capitalist structure or capitalist system, we more concentrate on economic growth. We, 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 we talk about, uh, you know, focusing on GDP so that at least all, uh, at least there, there, there is a lot of production. And when there is a lot of production, naturally GDP rises. And when GDP rises, governments say, yeah, I think we are developing. But you know, the focus on GDP uh, results in broadening the gap between rich and the poor. And that is where uh, uh, cap the whole premise of capitalism is questioned. Even in the recent writings of Piketty and other authors who have been writing in the last few decades, we find a lot of writings are coming on increase in inequalities. But so it means what? If capitalism is uh, focusing on or, or resulting in some kind of increase in, uh, in the gap between rich and the poor, it means it's, it's not a system which can really sustain long. Okay, so what, what can happen? You know, then the poor will get more poorer and the rich will get richer. And, the, and then you will have a, a, a sizable amount which will be an exploited class. And in that area, we, we need to look for alternatives. We need, we need to see what best can uh, happen, what, what best system we can follow, which can... which can you know, sustain for long, which can assure that at least this gap does not broaden. And that is where we need to look back and say the, what is the role of business organization. Of course, when we look at Indian economy, we have seen the growth in last 30 odd years, huge growth, huge economic growth. Uh, in last 30 years, ever since we opened our economy in 1991, we have seen emergence of new kind of organizations, new kind of strategies have come in, in, in force. And we have, with, we have uh, seen the organizational life getting reduced. If 30 years back when, when we were studying organizations, we were looking at organization sustainability, we found that the average age of organization was 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, it was more. But now we see in top 10 uh, most valuable uh, companies of the world, we find most of those companies have uh, 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 came into existence in the last 30 years. And that is how things are happening. And maybe in the time to follow, you will find further that this will happen. Uh, and we will move more uh, move towards the valuation model. Okay. Anyway, so uh, this capitalist thinking, which focused on on, uh, on concentration of wealth in the hands of few is a flawed approach. And uh, flawed in the sense uh, where you do not have distribution of wealth, proper, proper distribution of wealth. But if within this, if you have a component which uh, can take care of uh, 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 removing inequality, we can look for such kind of alternatives. Now, another system which was uh, there in function, or especially when we got independence in 1947, when, when planning uh, started in India, we uh, started following uh, uh, a mixed structure. So we had socialist uh, uh, approach. So socialist approach was where government was taking care of uh, uh, many things. And from that time till 1991, we followed that up. Okay? And uh, 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 great institutions came into being. Okay, and in socialist structure, you have uh, uh, ownership of resources uh, 
by community. And this is very much prevalent uh, in some parts of the Northeast of India. Okay, you, you have a, a focus on social development across classes. You have more focus on distribution of wealth and uh, you more vouch for or, or voice for uh, equality. Uh, 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 you know, spreading equality so that at least the wealth gets distributed. So we need that kind of organization. So we had an era which was before COVID era. We say it is BC. BC is before COVID. And we are moving to after COVID. We say AC. AC is after COVID era. So how we can move uh, uh, from the learning of the past to the future. And that is where I propose that we need to move away from socialism and capitalism to the to to something called the con creating conditions for humanism and when we talk about humanism we i talk about human development i talk about when we need to focus more on developing entitlements of people empowering people to take decisions investing more on on the on you know on health infrastructure uh, uh, that is the calamity in the present times that we are seeing. Investing more on health, uh, on, on education parameters, or, or, on uh, education infrastructure, so that at least uh, things improve in that. So what is the role of a state when I talk about humanism or the organizations which can concentrate okay, on, 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 uh, on the products and uh, uh, processes uh, related to people more? Okay, so the role of the state is that you, you, uh, you devise uh, your policies in such a way that they focus more on human development rather than economic development, rather than economic growth. And you see, I, I personally, I'm not against economic development. I shouldn't be sounding as if I'm against economic development. My, it is the, only the approach is different. Okay, so I say that if you concentrate on human development, it will automatically lead to economic development. But when we keep on concentrating on economic development, it has not resulted in better human development. And that is what we have, what uh, statistics tell us. Okay, and that is what has happened in last uh, uh, 30 years, ever since we, uh, you know, uh, ever since this data on human development has started coming. Uh, uh, how we have grown as India, okay, and that I find is is somewhere where this has been a casualty, where, because this has not been the focus area, okay. So that is what is important. Now, what is the role of market? I'm not saying at any point that we don't need market. We need market, but then what should be the focus of the market? What we need to do in the market, you know, the market function. You you all have studied the uh, the the you know the laws of uh, demand and supply. So, uh, 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 I was reading uh, some of the modern economists uh, uh, last few days. What they are saying: we need to push demand. We need to keep on pushing demand. You create demand, and you create or uh, uh, some kind of uh, demand which uh, uh, even people do not know that they really need such a uh, such product. You go and tell them that you require these. Things. I think that is something which is very, very faulty. What is required is that what people need, you produce that. Okay, so instead of pushing demand, you need to make sure that you supply what is needed by the by them. So you cannot you cannot have a, a more focus on demand. The more you focus on demand, what will happen? Organizations will keep on focusing more on profit and more on creation creating more production services in aspirational market. And this aspirational market is something which uh, uh, increases our aspirations and uh, we keep asking for more and more and more and more. I get reminded of, you know, on a lighter mode, uh, note uh, that uh, advertisement of Pepsi, which was uh, that yidil mange more and, and, and your, your dill never gets satisfaction. So you never get that kind of satisfaction. So you always keep asking for more. And in that domain, what happens, your demand keeps on increasing in such a way that pushes all the organizations to come to your house. Or even organizations keep coming to you and they tell, tell you that this is something that is required by you. And, and you did not know that uh, this is something which you really require. 
I get reminded of a writing, very a classic writing by Marx. Marx wrote uh, and Marx said that, you know, you are leading a very good life. You are leading a wonderful life. Okay, and, and you, you, your, your uh, family is satisfied. Everybody is happy in the family. But the next day, when, when you see a multi-story building just adjacent to your uh, building, then you start feeling small. It is not because of you yourself. It is because you are, you are influenced by neighbor. And I think that is something which needs to change. One has to look at oneself. We keep on telling our children, you see, we keep on pushing that to our children. Okay, and that is where I think we are committing a mistake. What is required then? We need to look at the competency of a child, competency of the system, competency of the organizations and produce about it. Okay, and that is where I think uh, uh, that is the role of market. When we say role of state, state's role should be to focus on human development rather than economic development and let human development take care of economic development. And role of market should be move, uh, I means instead of pushing sub demand, push supply. And that is what has happened. In fact, in the morning session, uh, the vice chancellor of, uh, of uh, Mizoram University was talking about that. You know, what has happened in the last three months? And this is something which I think we need to appreciate the government here. Uh, that we did not have any industry which was producing PPE kit. And today we have more than 200 firms in India which are producing. Because that is, there is a demand existing and you are producing according to demand. Okay, you are not uh, 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 producing in order to create demand. The moment you start creating demand, your focus becomes more on marketing everything you know so you want to sell comb to me um if i'm a bald person you tell me how comb can help me okay and that i think is a very very faulty approach and that is something which especially look at our own scriptures indian scriptures and what they are talking about okay so i won't get, uh, go in detail of that so role of market then when we look at business organizations organizations need to focus on purpose than profit. You know, the great organizations which are today, which have left, Bhartanduji, how much time I have more? Maybe 10 minutes? Five, 10 minutes? Uh, sir, we are very much interested to listen you. Okay, we fine. So, okay, 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 fine, that is great. Okay, so uh, if we look at the great organizations, these great organizations which have uh, which have stood the test of time in of last 100 years or even 150 years, these organizations of the world I'm talking about, these organizations are not those organizations which have concentrated on profit. These are the organizations which have concentrated on purpose. So if organizations concentrate on purpose rather than profit, one can really survive better. I give you an example of an organization called 3M. You have this great company called 3M. 3M is not the most profitable company. 3M is a corporation which is going to stay for 500 more years. When Bill Havert was asked that uh, Bill Havert who, who founded HP, okay, Havert and uh, Dave Packard, both of them when they founded HP, when Bill Havert was asked that which organization do you think is going to survive long and which is going to be most a sustainable organization in your uh, thinking, uh, and, and, and Pat came the reply. And the reply was, it is going to be 3M because 3M is a highly innovative organization, which is uh, creating products for people and innovating products. And their focus is not on profit. I'm not, I'm not really talking about just one organization. You had an organization, I mean, you read about, uh, uh, about the story of Tony C. Tony C has written this book called, uh, uh, book called Delivering Happiness, with the, the company called Zippos.com. He started, th this was the first company of uh, online shoe seller. Okay, and in this whole book, Delivering Happiness, he's talking about shifting the focus from profit to purpose. If you are a purpose-driven company, you can survive long. So in purpose-driven company, you, your, your focus should not be on uh, the profit, but it, it should be on purpose. 
And that is what I think should be part of the strategies for the government. Next, your focus should not be product or process. It should be people. You need to move away from process and product to people. Because it is the people who are going to use the products or service, whatever it is. Okay, so you you can devise a process through which you can reach to people best. Okay, but I, if you are devising a process in isolation of people, you are not going to survive long. Okay, and I tell you, in post-COVID era, only those organizations will survive which have concentration on people on people aspirations, on people demands, on, on what people are asking for, and what really people are looking for, whether it is from the HR side or it is from the finance side. What, what really people look for? People look for money, people look for salary, or people look for better working conditions. And that is where I think the organizations have to devise policies and strategies to respond. And that is a greater challenge. And that is going to be a greater challenge in the times to follow in the given country. So such organizations are going to survive long. And their strategies have to be uh, 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 according to that. Now, you know, when our focus is on business, business does not take care of society. If all the businesses were taking care of society, the conditions which were created during this COVID era would not have resulted the way they have been. What happens, you know? Society responds to business. So society is primary. It is not the business which is primary. And in the race of earning more, what we did, we have moved away from fulfilling social, uh, 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 you know, uh, social aspirations of people or fulfilling the needs of society. What we did, we more concentrated on concentration of wealth or surrender to market forces. And when we surrender to market forces, society becomes secondary, business becomes primary. And when business becomes primary, society loses, okay? And that is why from companies, people leave and go. There, is, there, there are companies during last two months, they have announced incentives to some of their uh, uh, employees. How many companies can do that? And company, only those companies can do this which have a strong investment on people. Because people, if you can buy people's loyalty, people will never leave. You know, today, the when we look at the uh, uh, FAOL's principles of management, 14 principles of management, there is one principle of uh, FAOL, which talks about commitment, which talks about uh, obligation. So that was the time, that was 100 years back, 100 and... Uh, uh, it was uh, uh, Fiol's principles came into being in 1915 around some time. Okay, uh, that came in French at that time, and in 40s it was translated in English and reached to masses. Okay, he was talking about because at that time it was people were uh, organizations were obliging people by giving employment. Today, employees are obliging uh, organizations. By, by working there, especially the talented employees. And that is the reason why in organizations, in organization management, a new uh, thinking has come up where we are talking about talent management. We need to manage talent in organizations. And that is, I think, in the times to follow is going to be, again, another challenge for organizations. So you need to retain better people, okay? Because these are going to be required in all kinds of organizations. So your investment on people has to be primary. So when we talk about a broader structure, we say business is not primary. Society is primary. So our focus has to be on society. So society takes care of business. What is required by society? Business produces. Business is business provides and uh, uh, business functions as, as a subservient to, to society, to people of the, uh, of the country. And that is how we need to respond to it. Many of you might have heard of uh, Neom Chomsky. Neom Chomsky has been one of the great critique of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, Trump's government at present in, in the United States. Uh, this uh, great uh, philosopher, linguist, and thinker of America talks about failure of, uh, of uh, liberal capitalism. 
he says america talks about capitalism and it is one of the superpower in the world but does not have 1 lakh ventilators and we have seen what has happened in us okay so if government has not been able to prioritize health of people then what capitalism is all about where the concentration has been on people and that is i think is 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 a casualty where people need to look for ah the last 20 years what has happened you know over emphasis on technology of course when i talk about market the the the, the forces in the market when when we surrender to market forces in market everything all the companies which are in top companies most of them are technology companies so what technology is doing uh, when we were uh, studying in our schools we used to you know uh, listen our teachers used to tell us science is a good servant but a bad master okay aur hum logon ke yahan ek nibandh likhne ke liye aata tha ki vigyan jo hai aur vigyan ya technology okay ye vardan hai ya abhishap hai from that premise if i think technology if we are surrendering to market surrendering to market forces we are, if we are surrendering to technology technology is determining what am i going to do and i tell you in last 20 years what has happened a company like facebook company like twitter company like google these are some of the great companies of the world and these companies are generating lot of data out of when when i'm talking to you i'm using the zoom platform and zoom is selling data zoom is selling data in the market okay so the every second every mini second that i talk it is generating data it is a data resource and that gets converted into revenue for them so uh, uh, there are authors there are there are uh, people who are talking about uh, surveillance capitalism in this present times and this surveillance capitalism is where where data is sold and there is no law which can prohibit it and maybe in the time to follow it is going to happen and you know this technology dis uh, uh, disruption has uh, affected uh, lives of people in such a way that we uh, uh, what i am going to think google is going to tell me that this is how i am going to think okay so it it knows me better than me myself and that is in that way they they create data and they push and similar kind of product and services they are pushing so they are going to tell me what kind of products i require okay i may not really need them but they will tell you no this is very good because they have tracked my purchasing power or oh, they know that i have money in my bank account i can i have my my spending uh, habit is like this so i can spend more and so it means what we surrender to market forces we surrender to technology so we are vulnerable we are we are become subjects in the hands of technology company uh, yuval harari uh, was talking about it uh, yuval harari was talking in the world economic forum in february uh, and he said that uh, you know uh, this uh, the equation of the 21st century is going to be b multiplied by c multiplied by d is equal to ah a h h what is that he says b stands for biological knowledge my biology who am i what is my medical structure uh, what kind of uh, habits i have and all those things c stands for computing power okay so you compute d stands for data so b c d b multiplied by c multiplied by d is equal to a ah. a ah is what a ah sounds good okay a ah is ability to hack human okay so they are going to hack human so there will be a server which is which will be stationed in one corner of the world and this server will control everything you know in the ta in the earlier days what was happening whichever whichever uh, uh, country had better muscle okay was a dominating country then came the time when we said whichever country has uh, uh, more money 
is going to uh, dominate. Okay, so it enjoys more power. Okay, and I tell you in the times to follow, whichever country controls data, controls resources, will dominate. And in that, if we are responding to that, if we don't change the way we, we have been uh, uh, functioning, I think there will be worse times in the time to follow. And we need to look at what, what can happen and how we need to look for alternatives. So now I come to give some kind of uh, suggestion or strategies, what organizations, what kind of organizations should develop and what should be the focus. The focus should be, we need to evolve humanism as an alternative to capitalism and socialism. Humanism should be the order of the day in the time to follow. Human organizations, there should be human organizations. Human organizations does not mean that there should be only people in organization, nothing else. Human organizations means organizations should focus on people. The, the focus should be on humans. In the morning session, people were talking about self-reliance. What is this self-reliance all about? Self-reliance is that I should be able to do. I should be having resources to control things about me. Okay, so I should be self-reliant. I shouldn't be depending on all kind of people. Okay, so I can depend if I have resources. So I get into some kind of barter. I, I have money. I pay for what I require and I get that in the market from the market, okay? And that is how I develop, that's fair, okay? State or the governments, governments need huge investment, especially in this geography on education and health. So there are, there is a need to invest hugely on education framework and health framework, okay? If we leave it in the, uh, uh, private hands, I tell you, things are not going to improve in the, for the longer duration. Okay. Then third thing, we need to invest hugely on developing inner engineering as against outer engineering. We develop skills. We create great people. Okay. People are so much into studies that they, they prepare themselves for their career. They say, okay, I will get this kind of job, that kind of job. And they're so much specific about job that they forget about their life and they get what they want. And then suddenly they realize when they are pursuing in what they are, uh, uh, they, they wanted always. Okay. When they start enjoying it, they said, uh, this is not good. And they are not able to deal with their inner self. They're not able to deal with, with the conditions which have, which have been created around them. So education failed in not preparing them to face the uncertainties of life. And that is how you find Sushant Rajput's, uh, 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 what happened with Sushant Rajput that happened. People get into committing suicide, okay? Why people commit suicide? Because they are not able to deal with themselves. Why they are not able to deal with themselves? Because education has not taught them how to deal with themselves. In uncertain times, they should, this is the purpose of education. Purpose of education is not to give you job or to, to make you market ready. Ki market mein ek, uh, ek aadmi ki jarurat hai, jo 24 ghante kaam kare aur humne apni company mein, apne, apne uh, uh, university mein, apne uh, uh, college mein, aisa ek aadmi bana diya, robot ki tarah se, jo jake company mein kaam kare. No. This is not the purpose of education. This has never been the purpose of education. If uh, uh, anybody thinks that this is the purpose of education, I don't subscribe to that. I feel the very purpose of education is to create a better human being, to prepare the person to, to respond to all kinds of uncertainty. So that, the, uh, you know, the best in the person comes out when, when you deal with uncertainty, okay? In comfort zone, everybody stays in comfort zone, okay? So that is something where investment is required. We need to develop inner engineering, then the outer engineering. Uh, we find, yeah, maybe just five, two, three minutes. Okay, okay, sir, okay. Sir. Yes, I'm just coming to end, okay? So that is something which requires 
more focus. In fact, you gave me a little leeway. That is how I uh, proceeded. Okay. okay. Anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm just coming to. So what is required further is we need to get into backward integration. What is this backward integration? We need to go back to village. Okay. I, I was writing somewhere, you know, we need to have uh, small industries, village industries, industries concentration should be in the far flung areas so that overall development takes place, not concentrated in some big cities. Okay. Develop infrastructure. What has happened, happened in the villages in the last 70 odd years? In some of the villages, I tell you where I have been visiting, conditions have gone back to worst. In their school, if earlier there were three teachers, today there is only one teacher. Okay, what is if you start earning a little bit more in the village, you shift to a town area or you shift to an urban area just for the cause of better education for your children? Why? Why have we failed in providing better education in the villages? So we need to look back to the villages. Okay, develop villages in a better way so that our people who are coming from them, uh, from uh, these areas, they are better equipped to face the world. Okay, so we need to move away from another thing that is that is corporatization. Concentration of corporatization is not good for a country, okay, like India, where we have still uh, around thirty percent of population which does not have a square meal, and that is, I think, which is very very important. Okay, so if we want to have exposure on technology. Technology should facilitate our lives. Okay, we should not facilitate technology in such a way that we succumb and surrender in front of technology. And what technology wants, we start behaving like that. I think that is something which needs. So I come to the last slide, last uh, last slide in the sense uh, of what I'm not using anything of that kind. Last slide means last word, and that last word is in Italy. In uh, when the things were going worst, in all the houses, people were were having a flag, and in the balconies they were flashing that flag, and they were saying, "Andre tutu beni, Andre tutu beni, Andre tutu beni." In Italian, means everything will be fine. And if you believe that everything is going to be fine, I think. You need to create organizations of the kind that I have been talking about. You have to create systems of the kind that I have been talking about. And I think this way we can have better organizations, better systems, better society, and better country. Thank you very much for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share some of my personal thinking on the whole, uh, whole uh, uh, happening of COVID-19. Thank you, Bhartendri. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your uh, excellent, uh, excellent presentation, sir. This so wonderful, sir. So wonderful. Uh, we got some good questions for you, but uh, because time is short, uh, I would like to skip if you permit, sir. No, take it. Two, four questions. Take it. No problem. Sir, time. Next presentation only five minutes, and three presentations are there, sir. Acha. Okay. Tell me. No problem. Okay, sir. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Oh, I, I took the time of uh, of uh, presenters, it means. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, okay, oh, sir, I'm so sorry. You but... you should have told me that. <laughs> no, okay, no, because I wanted no. that at least people should have some questions and I should be able to respond to their queries. Uh, uh, if if you want, maybe towards the end, I can handle these questions. Oh, okay, okay, sir. As you wish, as you wish, I would be here. Thank, thank you, sir. Not, not, not at all. Sir, we can we can send questions to you and you can answer it and we can distribute we can share no with problem you. as you wish it is i'm at your disposal no problem okay sir thank you thank you sir all right uh, now i would like to request uh, first presenter dr avs ashok to he is a professor in department of management sciences uh, he will make his presentation now is okay sir it's your time now sir thank you sir thank you so much I'm, am i audible sir Yes, 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 you are audible. Uh, you are sharing your screen. Sir, yes, please, sir. Please do it very fast, sir. Two, three minutes only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, 
sir good morning everybody sir so uh, i i'll continue sir along with the sharing okay, okay. Uh, so I, i thank the organizers for giving me the chance and uh, i thank uh, professor avinash sir professor rao sir of mizoram university of professor rao of malawi university and professor stotriya sir or uh, uh, this uh, the chairman of this uh, technical session and uh, i just going to speak on the education sector sir and uh, the, the government uh, already we have heard from uh, avinash kare sir that 20.89 lakhs have been given as the atmanirbhar bharat uh, this thing by professor uh, by dr nirmala sitaraman the honorable minister and uh, i just wanted to quote from uh, bimal jalan sir the former reserve bank of india governor so what he said that this is going to help to decline to help to contain the decline of the growth uh, this will help to contain the decline of the growth and it is on the supply side actually in the slide if it is visible it is on the supply side and the economy is going to grow though it is going to be negative this this year it's going to be on the positive side in later in october 21 that is what bimal jalan sir had to say and the next slide is about another eminent dr dubir subarao so he said there is going to be 5%, 5% decline in the this fiscal 21 fiscal and uh, 21 22 fiscal there is going to be growth no doubt about it and uh, this has been voiced by uh, an economist from jp morgan also and uh, the, he also is of the same thing this is on the economy side sir and i just wanted to concentrate on the uh, just uh, touch about the economy for one minute and then move forward so we have seen 122 million jobs have been lost since uh, we have lost uh, nearly 122 million jobs in the month of march and april according to cmi and the various sectors and there was only one sector as professor stotriya sir has said we have to go back to far flung and go back to the villages and only that graph is there up if you see in the cmi this thing agriculture improved by 5% in april and may because there was containment zones in the urban areas people started moving there and this is the scene which we are going to expect uh, in the education sector in future already we have done mass and we are waiting for the students who come with mass and uh, what is happening in the uh, uh, academic sector education sector i just want to highlight about that sir there is sluggish cross border movement of students so subaro sir is sitting in malawi and we are sitting here in northeast and we are sitting in guntur all of us so there is no movement only online movement is going to be there and uh, so and many many of them who have taken the admissions for fall for this year they have all deferred for 21 and 22 that is what most of the universities have to say whether it's australia uk new zealand canada all these people uh, where they have 50% of our students are going there Uh, most of them have deferred because they don't want to have uh, online classes that is why so at the end of the day today we have to discuss whether online because uh, mizoram we are proud to hear that mizoram university has been online since march 18 till till that till today so this is the passive learning i'm just going browse through the headline the passive learning by the students uh, is this going to uh is this going to i mean appeal to the students or not and uh, most of the teachers so it took us at least two two weeks orientation to uh, take classes using an app zoom app kodatantra app or google meet webex etc so we are unprepared for the online teaching and uh, this uh, sir has said about recruitment recruitment pattern we will not touch opportunities so there is rise in blended learning iit bombay and all uh, they they are giving uh, classes on nptel swayam and all that how to implement blended learning use a mix of both online and offline that has been there for a couple of years and that has come to stay now offline is going to the back stage and online uh, presentation of classes is going to come forward learning management systems so the new learning lms modules are coming and uh, so we are is, running out of time sir uh, yes sir yes sir yes sir going ahead sir so 
LMS is the way of life that is shift to e-learning. So all of us have shifted, 100% we have shifted to e-learning. And, uh, but we, we all still prefer this, sir. Classroom learning, the, uh, the teachers as well as the students, they prefer 70%, they prefer classroom environment is the best for learning. So we have various benefits of e-learning. This is what we are going to see when the recruitment is going to start. I'm sorry, when the admission session is going to start sometime in June, July, if that is going to happen, people will come with masks and sanitizers and this is what we are going to look forward. But uh, now what is prevalent is online virtual classes are going on and everyone, we are going on with the online virtual classes and uh, this is a safe mode, 100% online. This is admission is going to be online, classes are going to be online, especially for this semester. And what are the students, the students have to get prepared for that. And uh, this is uh, yesterday's quote, I just wanted to put uh, 91 parent, uh, this, is, uh, this is my penultimate slide, sir, kindly. 91% of the parents in the NCR, capital region, Uttar Pradesh, North Uttar Pradesh, and all that a survey done by Mr. Umza, Professor Umza Naz, he has 10,000 respondents. They have given that, uh, please postpone the academic year. I don't know how far <laughs> that is <laughs> valid or... Okay. And uh, th this is the last slide, sir. Okay. It points to pro provide a personalized learning experience and provide a repository of mock tests and all that. This is what we have been doing. And uh, with this, I'll conclude, sir. Okay. Th th thank you, Professor Singh, sir. Thank you, Professor Sotriya, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are running short of time, so I will not take a question. I will distribute, ask the questions over email later on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much, sir. And now I would like to request uh, Dr. Shivankar Chakravarti, Associate Professor from uh, West Bengal. So please unmute yourself and... Uh... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. Sorry. Dr. Shubhankar. Dr. Shubhankar. The time is very short, two minutes, three minutes only. So uh, if possible, you can speak only without slides. Uh, so you are not audible, sir. Sir, you are not audible. Problem here. Huh? He's already unmuted. Sir, you are not audible. Excuse me, sir, you are not audible. You are not audible, sir. Your voice is not coming. Your voice is not coming, sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah, start again, sir. Uh, I think some problem is there. His voice is not coming. Some technical issue is there. Uh, so instead of, sir, uh, so we'll take the third presenter first, and after finishing him, we'll come back to you. Meanwhile, you are having, I think, some problem with audio. We are unable to listen to you. Uh, so we'll go to the third one, and then, if time permits, we'll come back to the second author. Uh, I request Dr. Anjane Sharma. Dr. Anjani Sharma. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, very sir. good afternoon. Yeah. I will be sharing my slides, sir. And very quickly, I will browse through. Uh, okay, sir. It is very short time. Only two, three minutes are there. So be very fast. Oh, very, very fast. I will do it, sir. Thank now, uh, very good afternoon, sir. Um, uh, respected Prof. Uh, Bharatendu, sir. Prof. P. Subharao Garu. Uh, Prof. Anish Kare. Prof. K. Samsara Garu. Jyoti Kumar, sir, for providing the opportunity, and uh, uh, Professor Sevaram Prasad, sir, my uh, senior academic colleague, guide, 
professor b k surprakash rogar and all participants uh, i am thankful for the opportunity my topic today is impact of hr strategies on it employees in the post covid era a study of uh, select it firms in hyderabad i have taken five uh, uh, you know different it firms and in the voca environment you know lot of transformation is taking place employees are usually stressful so role of hr managers is very crucial so hr strategies need to be redefined and implemented effectively so there are three major challenges uh, and basically hr is facing respond to the current uh, pandemic situation recover learning and emerge stronger and reshape thrive so uh, take the new normal into stride and really work forward then in addition dealing with uh, more matured uh, employees because the upskilled upskilling is lot of upskilling is going on so matured employees will be into the system so dealing with them is very important rise of female employees will be there so therefore dealing with diversity management is also a very important challenge so challenge to the old uh, hr practices will be actually orthodoxies will be removed and more of technology into hr will be creeping in now now i'll be dealing with the one of the hr strategies that is work from home so this particular pandemic has forced the work from home uh, uh, you know uh, uh, during this era so there are other uh, strategies like recover reflect recommit reengage rethink reboot or restart so this is what we have to do so then scenario planning so the timeline is 12 to 24 months uh so uh, actually this particular uh, research is uh, has been done by uh, professor bk sur prakash agar and me so they discover new realities reposition hr then since lot of layoffs are happening uh, you know this is this strategy is really an auto correlated one therefore this i have not taken only work from home i have taken for the present this thing it's a ongoing study these are the various dimensions i have examined and uh, uh, background normally there is shift of work culture new hr uh, strategies are required to combat this situation this is the literature Brief, uh, briefly what so many researchers have done the glen in 2050 he said talked about career passport so there is greater level of job satisfaction basically people are looking at so here i am basically looking at what is the impact of uh, uh, this particular pandemic on uh, the job satisfaction of employees usually there is a sudden shift that has come as a shock to employees so employees have to shift to the new normal that is online uh, way of functioning so therefore what is happening is uh, organizations want to know that what is the whether this current strategy how it is impacting employees because directly they may not be able to say it so but we also have lot of interest to do it so hr strategy, uh, strategy satisfy their employees so it's a backbone for any hr function therefore in the covid era this particular uh, uh, thing is very important then significance of study assess the impact of new uh, work from home on it employees in select uh, firms in hyderabad in uh, post covid era now these are the objectives of the study is examine the factors influencing satisfaction of respondents and then assess the impact of current hr studies provide inputs for betterment so this is the research question which i have done now methodology i have uh, taken a sample of 321 uh, so i have added uh, some more there are about 41 uh, items in uh, likert scale i have used and i've used uh, spss 20.0 factor analysis multiple regression the uh, things i have taken these are the statistical tools i have used these are my findings uh, dr sharma uh, we are yes, sir. very behind the time if you go uh if you share the slides with me i will share with the participants they will be coming to know all the things. next one 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 minute i will conclude sir okay, okay sir we are already taken second session we have already taken some time from yes 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 yes, yes. within one within one minute i will conclude sir it okay. is over now okay sir now reliability is very good so the two factors age and income are significant so uh, you know and the factor analysis showed about 12 factors that was significant So KMO Bartlett point eight three four has come, and uh, this is the factor analysis about twelve factors that have come. These are the various factors out of which five have been uh, really uh, been very significant, very prominent. So yoga and meditation, reading scriptures, compassion towards uh, others, animals and pets. People have come in a big way to actually the change of uh, activities also have taken to de-stress themselves. so this is what is the uh, regression equation 
and this is the so, um, uh, you know the suggestion the uh, so this is how disaster management control unit has to be set up redesign the entire hr function so brand hr employment rework on new software and many others and work design redesign restructure uh, rebuild and uh, the last but not least the employees basically manage employee sentiment is very important continuous communication relationship is very important and praising for good work a balanced approach uh, is very much important so in conclusion uh, so what i have seen is work wfh has come as a big way uh, is an impact on it employees enormously and these are the business implications these are some uh, limitations the further research is an ongoing research i am doing so it's a sector wise analysis basically i am now focusing on in the next one so thank you so much sir for the opportunity and any questions are there i will be very happy to answer maybe if you can send me through mail sir you are not audible uh, yes uh, thank you sir for uh, thank you sir uh, if you share the slides with me i will circulate it among uh, sure sure very much thank very you. much uh, i am uh i should say sorry to dr shubhankar we are not having time to come back to him if he shares his slides we'll be able to circulate it among all participants for our benefit and with this i will say thank you to professor vk shotriya dr avs ashok dr shubhankar chakravarti and dr anjaneya sharma for uh, sparing their time and sharing their views with all the participants